This story begins with my father. For decades, I could not remember some of his stories, and I had no idea why. Good actors make good storytellers, and he was a great actor. You've never heard of him, because at Columbia University in New York during the Depression, he was too poor to go to acting school. And then he was drafted into World War II, and after that, he was working hard making a living to support his wife and two children in Springfield, Missouri. He was gracious, loving, smart, completely unassuming, funny, deeply but quietly engaged in everything, and interested in life, especially listening to others. He could draw out the shyest people because he listened intently, his blue eyes focused completely on you. The only listener I ever saw whose listening matched his was talk show host Phil Donahue, on whose show I was a guest. From the back of a big audience, Donahue could look at you up on stage and make you feel like no one else was in the room. That's how my father was. But why was I sometimes a bad listener for him? After my father died, a Vietnam veteran who had known him told me there was no way I would ever know what he had been through. I'm sure he is right, but by listening since his death to many other veterans, including Isaac Pope and Charles Johnson, who served with him, I have learned much. And they and others have generously fed my longing to know how life has been for veterans from all eras. I have also learned how important it is for non-veterans to listen to them. My father, Jerome A. Kaplan, was captain of an all-black artillery battery during World War II. They fought in the Battle of the Bulge at Bastogne, which was a crucial battle of the war against the Nazis. They were the first black unit allowed to go into battle in World War II because their performance was sterling, and they won a presidential citation for meritorious service. After my father died, I had the honor and pleasure of meeting Isaac Pope, who had been my father's first sergeant, and he told me how they won the citation. Captain Kaplan, <laughs> they ordered the uh, 969th House to go into action. Not, I'll, I'll be better the first one who got into action, got those guns into action, and wiped out them tanks. We were headed around, you know, to cut everything off, you know. We wiped them out. That's, that's what caused us to get that citation from the president. I was a non-veteran growing up in the home of a veteran. Unlike many veterans, my father spoke about his war experiences, but for most of my life, I absorbed very little. Like most veterans who speak about their experiences, he never said he did anything important or heroic. Instead, he told stories about how wonderful were the men with whom he served. Some of the stories were funny, some were interesting, some were poignant. But something bothered me. And when I figured out what bothered me, it started me on a journey of listening to veterans and speaking to others about what I've learned. Every year when I was growing up, when Christmas was approaching, which was the anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge, my father would say, 12 years ago tonight, or 15 years ago tonight, and then describe how the weather was freezing, snow was falling heavily. Each year, I hung on his every word, but each year when he began to tell the stories again, it would strike me that if you asked me right now to tell you what those stories were, I couldn't remember any of them. Then when I was about 40, a friend made a videotape of my father telling his stories and gave me a copy. I put the tape on, sat alone in my room, and sure enough, there he was telling the stories that I recognized. And all of a sudden, I heard him say the words, I was a forward observer, and I had to turn off the tape because I broke down and wept. I knew what a forward observer was. That's the person who goes out ahead and is closest to the enemy. And that's when I realized that all those years, I couldn't bear to think of my father in such danger. So I just blocked the stories out. All those years, my father and I were part of what Colonel David Sutherland calls the epidemic of disconnection between veterans and non-veterans. As I see things, the relationship uh, between the American people 
and the military is a disconnect. In this country of 317 million people, only 23 million, that's less than 7%, are veterans from any era. And only 2.2 million are combat veterans. That makes those veterans who've been in combat 1% of the American population. Some people call them the other 1%. The experience with my father showed me how little I knew, that we live in a nation that is war illiterate and even military illiterate. I wanted to learn more. And so began my years of listening to veterans. What began with my father has led to years of listening to veterans and telling non-veterans what I've learned from listening, things I had not learned from my father. <laughs>